Hello guys, what's up? It's Mattia here. And uh, in today's video, we are gonna have this video interview with uh, Inda, who is a campaign owner that successfully funded her crowdfunding campaign after our session. And uh, so she's gonna tell us a little bit more of her experience in that, and she's gonna also give some tips to campaign owners who are gonna face the same journey. So enjoy the video and uh, thanks again, Inda, for uh, this interview. Yeah, so um, hi, Matia. Um, the project we had, which we started running in February of this year, was um, to publish um, our daughter's books. So we've got two, we've got three daughters, um, two of them, the older two are 12 and 10, and they, they love reading and they love writing and they've been writing for a while now. So they got to write their own debut novels. And um, we only got to find out about Kickstarter just by accident, really, and we thought it'd be a good way to try and get ahead of the game, kind of do the marketing beforehand and get a readership base, and also then make, in that way, make sure that we also can sell um, the books on pre-order. So um, that that was the that was the project. Um, we ran the project for a month. Um, thankfully, it was successful. Um, but there were lots of lessons learned. There were some hairy days, some good days. Um, but but overall, um, it's an experience that's very rewarding. We would do it again, but just applying the lessons that we learned along the way. What was like your attitude before launching the crowdfunding campaign? What was like your knowledge in that? Not much, um, to be honest. I, I um, we, we kind of did some research and we thought that you know not that we thought that was enough I think more and more as we did a bit of research we realized that we didn't quite know as much as we should have done um, but we were also focusing I wouldn't say on the wrong channels but focusing maybe um, on on one of the platforms that they were active on on Instagram and trying to get um, support that way in the end we did get some backing from there um, but but it was spread across a variety of sources so um, I think one of the biggest learnings from that respect is how long we needed to have prepared um, for the campaign um, and and where we needed to have gone with that preparation and the fact that we needed a, a concise strategy and we needed some expert help really to 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 plan out and deliver that strategy. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, because actually something that I always tell to my clients is that the thing that the actual campaign, so all the campaign materials and the actual launch are the very last steps okay, yes. that you order to successfully fund it, be successfully fund it. Because the thing is um, that uh, some people think that I just like came up with the structure of the campaign page. I make the video and then um, someone <laughs> is going to bait that, me. It's a very small part of it, I think. Um, I mean, they even got on the Projects We Love page. Um, but I think by the time we got to... Um, oops. So, just sorry. Um, sorry, Matthew, I had a call coming in. By the time we got to... Uh, maybe a third of the way into the campaign, we soon discovered that we needed help. Um, mm. um, it, 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 put, you can put the best videos together, you can put a good campaign page, good information in there. But the problem is, if you don't have that preparation beforehand, um, you will struggle. Um, but luckily, we found you. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't um, at the right time, um, because it was we were already in the campaign, um, your advice did help a great deal in showing us what we could have done to make it better. But there were bits and pieces of it that we took away as well. Um, you know, um, the the PR angle, we did that to some success um, because they got featured in the newspaper. So that brought some backing as well. Um, and then friends and family, we touched base with a lot of the backing came from that. Um, and then we, we did some ads. But what that has done, as much as it didn't yield as much as we expected, but that's also been creating a warm audience that we could use later. Um, and, I, and that was that, that was the thing. I think if we'd had that kind of knowledge before, a lot of that work would have been done. It would have been it would have been a lot more successful. Um, thankfully, it was successful. We met our funding goal, but it would have been a lot, lot more successful, I believe. 
um, if we had had such a strategy in place before, um, as we as we had with yourself, Matthew. Okay, yeah, and also easier. Because easier. Are, think, yes, absolutely. It's absolutely. Very struggling, I think. Yes. Right? Yes. It would have run itself. It would have run itself by that point because you would have put in all the work, made the necessary noises in the relevant places, done your right targeting, tried and failed with the ads, tried and failed, tried and failed, and then nailed down what ads were working in terms of conversion. Um, but having said that, um, you know, you either win or you learn, don't you really? You don't really lose. So I think. Um, that consultancy we had with yourself, now that we're going to get the books on Amazon um, and, and Goodreads and Kindle, that is going to come in very, very handy. And what we're going to be doing is using the warm audiences that we created from the ads that you um, supported us to do to um, build up, you know, the conversion on the um, Amazon and, and um, Instagram, oh, sorry, the Amazon and Kindle. Yeah, so I think, I think, you know, overall, it was really money very well spent. It um, uh, Facebook ads were something that I'd always wanted to understand a bit better. And uh, from that conversation, I'm, I'm quite comfortable. Might need some help because I'm not an expert yet, but I'm quite comfortable to go and do a few of those things myself and try and test a few things out. So, yeah. yeah I'm very happy to hear that because uh, the, the main thing about the ads is the thing that... Um, before running them, you need to know how to track properly everything, how to get the right yes. kind of value back. Yes. Okay? Because otherwise, all the money that you are going to spend are going to waste it in a sort of yeah. way. True. And if you want to be sure that every cent that you are going to put over there are going to be like uh, um, rewarding, okay, in a sort yeah. of way. Um, so it's um, it's important to know how to structure the thing. Okay, absolutely. Before doing that. Okay. Unfortunately, I have a lot of uh, clients that uh, told me, "Hey, Mati, I no, I don't want to run um, Facebook ads because actually I did once and uh, was like a waste of money. I didn't mm. get anything from there. Yeah, because you didn't know how to actually do that in the, in the yeah, right the way. targeting, the targeting is the challenge. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So you like uh, came back and start uh, started again the, the campaign. Okay, Your, the campaign that you. Uh, done okay mm -hmm. but, uh, what did you change um of of your strategy so what if i was to start the campaign again again okay, yes well i probably would start um my my uh, marketing maybe six months before mm -hmm. um yeah a year to six months before um building a tribe is very very important um because then you just have people who are just ready to press that button and just convert, right? Um, so I think that's the difference. That would be one of the different mm -hmm. things that we would we would do, um, making sure. Um, uh, also, just following the different strategies like um, the PR contacts, you know. Um, and then what else was there? There was um, there's a few other. Um, so make, getting influencers on board, you know, whether it's Instagram or it's YouTube. Um, creation, right? Yes. So creating that noise, creating that awareness, um, getting people. So, so it, it could be that every week there is something that's going on about the content, you know, and trying the ads and seeing what then um, converts. But also knowing that one of the things that we found is, 30 days might be the sweet spot for um, the campaigns, but um, there are some people, 30 days is not a very long time. It, it soon passes. Um, but there are also people that you need to have a structure in place for how you will get further backing or further support outside of that campaign. So have a structure in place where if people don't catch the campaign within 30 days, you can then get them to either maybe buy, if it's maybe for us now, it's going to be on Amazon. So we creating kind of a list of people who missed the, the campaign period to do that. Um, and and uh, I mean, what else? What else could one have done differently? I probably really, to be honest, because it was our first campaign, would have aired on the side of caution and had it for 30 or 30 or four, 35 or 40 days, I think. 30 days is advised, but, uh, you know, 
um, it would have been a lot less pressure if we had a few more days. A lot less um, pressure. Yeah. 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 So, um, and what else was there? I think. Um, yeah. I, I I think that's it. It's the preparation. Really, I can't think of anything better than the preparation because I I think it it, it depends on um your community because in the UK Kickstarter is not a big thing. I think in America people know about it a lot more. Um, but then in the UK, people don't really know it as much. And in our community, uh, it's even less of um, common knowledge. Um, so that was one of the reasons why going into the campaign, we didn't really think that um, friends and family, we've got lots of friends and family who were close enough and we're going to back anyway. But like the general community, um, we weren't really targeting them per se. So um, from that perspective, um, I would really narrow down the targeting, really make right. sure, yeah, the targeting, the targeting, the targeting. Is not going to be enough. This is the, the reality. You need, yeah. like, a warm yeah. kind of community that yeah. are going to be heard and thrilled in backing the actual company, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, now I think that the girls are happy and have decided to Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, they are happy. They made because at the point, oh dear, you know, what's the funding goal too big? I thought, no, it's two books. It's not one book, you know. If you, it's two, you, you kind of forget that it's two books we're trying to publish at the same time, so you can look at that goal and think it's too big. But we did it in the end, and and we're making progress with the fulfillment. So we're running the surveys now to get the addresses, uh, making sure the accessories, whether it's postcards or bookmarks, are getting ready. Um, and then we're talking also with the bookshops in which it's going to go. We've now got it on Amazon and Goodreads. So a lot of things are happening. Some of them are going for advanced reader copies just to get some kind of reader, real reader feedback out in the community. We've got some, um, but we just want to sp um, spread it out wider. So the next thing would be to run the ads to make sure that those ads take people to Amazon where they can purchase the books using the warm audiences from the ads we did before. Not everybody I talk about is the default campaign also, right? Mm, because mm. the thing is that you guys run the campaign to like fund a project, like a product or a service, but then, okay, you can like actually you are gonna start working on sale, yeah. okay, again, and continue selling this kind of a mm. project, different channel, because actually at that point in the project and the product. Um, it's life it's, almost the game a reality like mm. in the market okay mm -hmm. it's this mm -hmm. okay from there um, and so it's going to be also important like start wrapping up and uh, rolling the thing after the campaign it's very important very important I mean to that point like I said my um, our community um, if an, a Facebook ad took them to Amazon they, you would probably get better conversion than when it takes them to Kickstarter because there are a few people who could not support or back the campaign because they couldn't understand how to work the Kickstarter interface. And that's not because they're not computer literate or anything. It's simply because they don't understand the concept of Kickstarter. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so that that is a challenge. It's a sensitization challenge as well. Really understand who... Um, you expect to get the backing from and sensitize them on what Kickstarter is and how it works. I think it's one of the things that in the process of talking to people, you need to have maybe a little video to say, this is what you do. This is you click this button and it shows you the rewards. And if you want to, because that, that it takes away the problem of people not knowing how to operate Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing is that actually on Kickstarter or Indiegogo or on this crowdfunding campaign platform, you're going to talk to the early adopter, okay, to a very, like, first initial niche of mm. people going to be interested in that specific kind of, yes. topic, okay, a very, like, niche, uh, early adopter kind of people, curious kind of people that actually are going to be interested in being the first. Yeah. Okay? Yes. And then yeah. after, okay, this, after you're going to get this portion of the market, you, you can start talking to the mass market. And so mm. you're going to figuring out how to run the thing on Amazon, on other kind of channel. But it's yeah. something that you need to 
um, uh, start climbing, okay, mm. from a special person like of early adopter or like book lover in your yes. case, right? Yeah. And then you can proceed to the mass market. Yeah. But these are like how. Yeah. It's, a, it's a curve, isn't it? It's a curve. I think one of the things we also found is that we um, we got support when um, somebody shared the, the newspaper story on some Facebook groups for historical fiction, which is one of the girls' books, or the Facebook groups for fantasy adventure. Um, so people picked up on that. And I think it's, these are like book loving early adopters like oh a 12 and a 10 year old have written books why we want to be part of that story and then they did that but it's uh, it still all comes back to the targeting if you don't know how to target those people properly and get them ready set to go yeah exactly. when your campaign launches um you've you you you're running out of time already by the time your camp you've, you've launched your campaign yeah what we talked about during our session though right exactly exactly and and, and i i could see it i could just see it um you know there were other ways that one we thought i think i asked you this about using a youtube audience which is a very warm audience because it's their subscribers people watch their videos um but it, there's the technology side of it to try and get that ready but that's something else that one can think about later exactly. yeah exactly. but I, it, right. it was such an eye-opener um having i mean I, we have another campaign in mind um that we're thinking about for another business um a chili oil business that we're doing so uh, you know we'll use the strategy as you've aligned uh, outlined it and try and um, get you know get it going that way see how well we can run this one when we get to okay. it yeah Perfect. but we'll be in touch of course yeah i'm it's sure we'll need some help sorry i'm sure we'll need some help so we'll be in touch of oh, course. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so at the end of the campaign how much did you raise with the campaign five thousand six hundred and 31 we were after four um 4997 okay yeah. okay so yeah. i i raised like almost 111 six. something um percent okay yeah, yeah okay yeah, yeah. Okay. But there was there was small scope. There was definitely a lot of scope. I think um, if we'd found right. somebody like you from before, there was so much more scope to do a lot with that campaign. I'm sure of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that suggestion for everybody that are gonna watch this video? Yeah, yeah. May you should be prepared before doing that. Okay, a it's long time. Yeah, take a take a time. Take because the preparation that you do. Important. Yes. Yeah, the preparation that you do is just going to, because now that we're out of it, out of the campaign, we feel, I mean, 561 books, so they're about sold. We feel a lot more relaxed because you know the word is out there. There are people waiting for the books, even if you still have to do the work to sell more books. Um, but you feel relaxed rather than when you would have just printed, I don't know, 5,000, 1,000 books and put it on your doorstep expecting to sell them one by one. You know, um, so imagine if you do that work well and then you end up selling instead of 561, you end up selling um, maybe 2000 books beforehand. I mean, I've seen projects where in the publishing space um, they were going for sixteen thousand dollars and they made one hundred and thirty seven thousand. They are established authors. Don't get me wrong, but they did their work. You can see how they're running their campaign that they've done their own work. So, yeah. The only way to do that, like, is prefer like all the things before, like create that community number, get trust, and be prepared in uh, launching them. Yeah, yeah. And engage, engage the backers, engage okay. the backers, the updates. And you can see them replying. I mean, we, we send updates every two, three days, replying to comments and messages. Yes, engagement is absolutely necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you so much. For, thank you, Mark. Yeah, thank you. Very out, uh, very happy to help you out with your campaign. Thank and, you. Uh, it's a pleasure to me. You too. Thank you. Thank you so much for your help, Matthew. Thank you. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye bye. Bye. bye.